All right, it should be recording. Can you see the file? Yay, I see the file. All right, continuing with what I hope will be the uh, final part to the review playthrough. I, I'm hoping I will be able to finish off the uh, Earth Rises DLC. Next thing I have to do is visit the bar here. And I don't want to forget to mention that this is uh, Star Control Origins, uh, looking at the Earth Rising expansion. Um, and the keys were provided by Stardock. The Malings are arguing. Sure. Yeah, let's accept them all. Kind of like doing this. All right. This is going too fast. I just... Okay. <laughs> I, I just like that it, I do have these options here. Um, I should have gold. I think I have that locked. Yep, I got plenty. <laughs> Alright, um... I, I know it isn't that far, so... I think. Isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's reasonably close. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> Mm. <clears throat> 
So, hopefully this will be explained, because he was kidnapped, and now he rented a room in a, at a bar, still in his uniform, paid a month. Huh? I may have picked a very good spot to, to stop and have dinner and such. I mean, just imagine trying to, you know, stop after finding that. Oh yeah, that's right, that thing's there. That's the Mukay plate, the Mukay colony, isn't it? This one it was. It is some okay. I th why, why was I thinking something was Mac Mac? Anyway. Oh, that figures. So let's go back. Well, hang on a sec. Well. Captain, this is the infected Xraki warship we found earlier. It's impossible to tell for sure, but we are detecting the same type of radiation we observed at their research station. We'll collect some data now to show the little squids. See, I... I got that artifact. So... I'm just hoping that it ties into something, that we don't have another loose thread, or seemingly loose thread. Because it is getting annoying. It's like you find this stuff, you've got no idea what its purpose is. And I get it's a large area, there's lots of things around, so lots of possibilities, but it still is just... I mean, especially for a DLC, don't just throw random things in here, come on, it's supposed to be a shorter... shorter setup, have us led and go ahead and lead us there, like how um, that one scribe uh, ship we encountered in Return of the Lexites. Um, it's like that one only discovered it because of another mission that was there for. Oh wait, did it say in the system? Ah, okay. I just kept reading it as bar, not star. Well, easy enough to fix because that's it, right there. It's 
so it's weird that the glue shot this far out. That's a distance. I did just fill up though, so. Mehen, or Mehen, something like that. Right there. Curiously, it says I've not visited it previously. Captain, this is the planet the Glush cartographer wanted us to deploy the beacon on. Captain, the beacon has been deployed. What a fun day. Is it just go back to him now? That video sell stuff. Oh, hang on. Cap Captain, Captain, we're receiving an error from the beacon we placed on Mian. It is still broadcasting, so it hasn't been destroyed. But it's also moving, which wasn't really part of the plan. <laughs> the planet so moves. It either gained sentience or it's been stolen. Or well, maybe that ship over there has something to do with it? Captain, the beacon we placed on Mian is missing, but we are still detecting its signal. It hasn't... I'll be aggressive with this. I'm just gonna put it back. I assume that that's, you know, what I should do. Captain, we're replacing the stolen beak. Let's hope it doesn't wander up. And why would the Gloosh claim this planet it is so far away?
Okay. Just make me wonder about that other beacon that I found. I just realized I really should have gone to the um, uh, Zopens sector first. So I could, you know, come back here, turn that in as well. Oh well. And second thought, I will get fuel first. I may have enough. I would rather not have the Taiwan have to drag me home. Is there anything else? Exception, civil fa- Feel like pointing out what the heck would drink and sing karaoke to? Because that's what they were doing. They got up and they were singing. Well, did it say they were singing karaoke? Not? Well, at least they got up and were singing. What would they be singing? The drinking aren't exactly the most cultured of species. Most of them are only a couple days old. I mean, the measured might know more tunes than the drinking. That's curious. Oh no, I need a basher. Okay, it doesn't say where I can expect it. Expect to find it. Um, I think actually there are some on Rainbow Worlds though.
Wait, there's a beacon here? This is where I ran into it? the heck? Why am I bouncing? One basher. Thanks again. I hope we meet again someday. We did just meet again. And I just want to I'm gonna have to do more than the one. seeing any other critters by the way well there was a one guy that was walking around the, the big insect looking one but that's not what I need yeah these worlds the rainbow worlds are so noisy it's hard to spot things on them
shine another world unless it's... Oh no, that may have said Bastion instead of Beacon. Finding it. I'm just curious. Oh, that's in. We'll just, you know, head back down to that. Actually, I can probably go all the way to uh, Epsilon Driving. What is left to say, humans? Oh, morality. I shall destroy you with this. Told you. You coming? What is left to say? Oh, morality. something I want to try first. And also... Okay, yeah. The beacon is secure, is what it said. Born. All right, I, I can check that out.
Alright. Nothing. Yep. I, don't know, I just feel like turning in the commander's body is going to trigger things, so I want to make sure I clear the, the bar stuff first. And like to note, did not have the option to get into a fight there. It just started cycling into, well, not that. The vault in the Lavorn cluster makes me curious. Plus, there are plants that I haven't been, well, systems that I haven't uh, been to yet, so it's kind of worth it. Welcome back. Interesting. I don't think I've been here yet. It, I'm aware of it being ruins specifically. Maybe I have been here. Captain, this looks like drawing close to it seemed to do. It's not much more we can do here. We'll go. That may be the, uh, the antenna the scribe was talking about. I keep forgetting, I want to look at the fleet. See that golden, uh, masher, nasher, whatever that is. Grasper, there we go. The Muke ship. Well, that was awkward. Captain, we've found a heavily fortified building here. Someone was trying to protect something. There's an archway leading into the building, but it's closed. There are seven panels on the archway. Three of them are lit up. The other four are dark. I and need to find a the pattern on the door. Kind of like a constellation. This looks like the Lavoran cluster. Huh. I wonder if this is related to the Well, not much more. I wonder if this is related to these and Well, not much more we can do here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Three are lit, four are not. Well, there's four I haven't been to. So that's what I'm gonna try.
We'll also find out about this. Well, I'm sorry, but you're not going to be able to stop me. Thank you. Ah, damn, right into the storm.
kind of wish I could just sell some of these ships that I find. Found a wrecked ship, Captain. We'll see if we can get this thing flying again. That ship. Yeah, where was it that I found the one that was crashed? Hey, more radioactives. I don't need them anymore, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad I found them. It's following me. Could prove a little bit of a problem, because I want to say that those ships are actually kind of powerful. I could be wrong, but I think I did fight one in the uh, original playthrough. Those are bashers, those aren't drones. Then yeah, I guess I will land, obviously, since I hit the button.
much. Or let's let's actually clean this up. I didn't realize there was gonna be more than the one. Just wasn't thinking or paying attention. At least I can outrun it. Another antenna. Captain, this drawing close to it seemed to do... I wonder if this has something to do with... Not much more we can do here. We'll go. Alright, now let's deal with this. Actually, yeah, yeah. So what do you want? So with this, it'll just be two more. Captain, this looks like some drawing close. I wonder, not much more we can do here.
means the Taiwan ship might be better for this. more radioactives. Ship, Captain. We'll see if we can get this thing flying again. Ship, Captain. We'll see if we can get this thing. Now I'm starting to not feel like it.
wonder why so many radiant vessels may tie in with the vault. Yeah, that's one of the heavy, we'll the heavy ones with again. the dumb fire missiles. Ui or just ui? Should have done this one last. Oh well. Interesting. This one doesn't have the, uh, the drones on it. Captain, this looks like drawing close to it. I wonder if not much more we can do here. I should have done this one last because I need to go in that in the direction I'm now going away from.
That worked. Somehow. I launched the drone at him. <laughs> Borderline by accident. Oh, that's right, I did start with it. Captain, this drawing close to it seemed... I wonder if not much more we can do here. But that should be all seven now. Because three were lit, four were not. I've activated four.
Jones figures. I know I've already been through this one, but I'm still going to do it. I'm not seeing it anywhere. Oh, nope. I don't I don't think that was it. Oh, no, that is it. It's right there. I was just about to leave too.
got a toasted ship here, Captain. Literally. The aliens who flew this one appear to have been primarily bread-based. We don't know anyone like that, do we? Well, we'll salvage what we can. I think it'll be mostly crumbs, though. Sorry. You should be very sorry for that one. I honestly don't remember which one has the thing in it, but I'm going to start at Alpha. I will start here. This looks like it, though, because I remember it being the closest planet. Captain, this is the Fortify. There's something different about the panels on the archway now. There are seven panels on the archway. All seven are lit up, and the archway is opening. Captain, what should we do? Go in. We're heading into the building now. There are a lot of thick doors in here, Captain. Unlocked thick doors. I'm still not sure if these were designed to keep people out or something in. Do you want us to keep going? Wait, we found something. It's some sort of weapon. We're bringing it out now. Singularity, that's what I have. All right. Uh, yeah, here. Welcome back. So is the uh, the new ship going to be named after the commander, I wonder? Welcome back, Captain. That's horrible news. But at least you brought him home. We will have an autopsy performed before we inter him. We perform the autopsy. As you might suspect, death was caused by a massive laser blast to the face. Yeah. We aren't sure what kind of weapon would do that. From the power output, it almost looks like it was a ship's laser that had been converted into a handheld weapon. More interestingly, we found an object in his esophagus, as if he swallowed it a few minutes before he was killed. The object is a smooth piece of computronium, like the Lexites use. Unfortunately, we don't have the technology to read it. A quick survey of the aliens on the station suggests most other species won't be able to either. We will send it back to your ship, in case you find someone who can. Also, if you can think of anyone that would repurpose a ship's laser into a gun, it might help us track down Megara's killer. I hailed the dry dock. Yeah, battle. See, right now I'm just wondering if maybe the the uh, librarian. Thank you. 
might be worth it asking them. And they should be there for a reason, right? I mean, I already have it written down that it was disappointing. I can go back and edit that if it is a that this guy ends up being helpful now, but I am not holding out hope. The librarian, I think, is more likely to be useful here. Serpents. In theory, I could also try asking the scribe at the uh, uh, comm station, but whether or not just yet. Thanks. I hope we we'll meet again someday. Oh, without really knowing where else to go. I'll make it. Why make it there and anywhere else, though? Yeah. I don't think it's worth trying to go up to the star base and then over. I could also ask at the bar, it's just... It seems odd that nothing has prompted, like, hey, do this, or hey, talk to them. Like the, um, uh... Observers appearing. Jeff might also be able to answer the question. He should be as advanced as the light side, you'd, you'd think, or more so. Probably more so. You have, it. have you found information about the next This is incredible. A transformation of matter into pure animal material. Powered, polymorphic, possibly sentient. This is like side technology? No, we cannot read it. Hmm. 
No species native to this world has this power. Perhaps that probe that the Maulin drew there. His kind originates from outside the planet. Outside the galaxy? I'd, I'd like to point out, actually. Doesn't help with the weapon, but... does make his uh, presence more important. Jeff's presence, well, we turn kind of thing, yeah. Six year, welcome back. I just realized, yes, good. I, I just wanted to make sure that everyone did get, uh, all the ships did get refilled. Nope, this one. Uh, damn. See, I don't quite remember where he is. And I will mark this then. Yep. The Malwings continue to wear my patience thin. What is it now? Good. Well, not good. But not bad. Seriously, no why is he being a jerk? They will find a way to return to the brink of extinction soon. Well, they weren't actually on the brink of extinction, but okay. Eject it from your ship and send it to this nearby beacon. I will create another instance to examine it. I will not connect directly to Lexite technology. I could be compromised. They are potent kin of yours, human. Instead, I will create an instance of myself to read it, and then destroy that instance afterwards. Cool. A moment. I see. This is a massive amount of data. There's very little structure to it, and no context. But it seems to contain a recording of the movement of every particle within a star. No, a whole solar system. Do you have any idea what this might be for? Yes, I think you are right. I am seeing some patterns in the data. Ratios between the data recorded on the nodes, which matches the gravitational constant and barycentric dynamical time. This is a galactic map with enough precision to be used for hyperspace travel. It doesn't lead anywhere. It is a map, not a set of directions. This looks to be a map of a single solar system, but it doesn't match with any systems I know of. The gravitational markers are so exact that I should be able to place it. It looks to be in the spur. It looks to be a solar system the light sites were routing through. I'm sending back the coordinates so they will be added to your hyperspace map. Terrific. So long. I so want to annoy you more. Oh, okay. That'll be... 
best to um, type a jump to. Six you, welcome back. get in there before you can stop me. Why would I want 20 magnesium? I love that I'm faster than it. I mean, I'm not going to be able to avoid it because I'll be facing it when I come out of this planet, but... It's still as handy. Just deal with the drone.
was annoying. I was holding down the phasers and they didn't do anything. That's all I really got, right? Try again. Maybe they'll find something more. Hmm. I don't see anything else here. Out that then, but who would I talk to for that? It's not like anyone is really known for weapons. Six you, welcome back. Syndicate should be helpful, shouldn't they? I mean, it doesn't make sense that they're just sitting there, right? At a whole DLC with, you know, we get to become part of them and they're supposedly gonna help us. Well, let's actually see if that's true. back. Ask then. All right. Damn. Of course. I also just remembered I wanted to look at this thing. All right. Nothing. Well, was the guy that was selling the illegal weapons? Where was he, though? Z Bootis. It's not that far away. And it would make some sense that there is a connection. Mm -hmm. 
again, putting these these guys to use. But it's also a why doesn't somebody say, hey, remember him? Maybe he knows. Welcome back to the Grand Geology Bazaar. Can I interest you in some asteroid fragments? Planetary core sample. Of course, I would never do anything like that. Uh, again. But yes, perhaps, once, before you showed me the error of my ways, I might have uh, customized a Lexite laser into a handheld form. It was a particularly ingenious piece of work. I called it the Death Beam. No sense being cute about it. No, I don't sell or buy them or make them or fondle them while I sleep. Normally, I would never disclose a customer's identity. However... But as you are my very best customer, I'll make an exception. Her name is Nixalura. One of the few ex raki to survive the war. She is an assassin, and a very expensive one. I don't know. She usually hangs out in the Epsilon Orchidium system. But be careful. She values her privacy and is likely to kill anyone who comes too close. She can try. Goodbye, then. <laughs> there, fuel warp. That's my plan. Same distance. But it's also interesting because wasn't that the name mentioned for the uh, syndicate researcher? But it's also weird that so the, there's at least one Xraki that ceased being insane. Um, hang on, I also. Just because I should make some notes.
there. And we're here. That's probably her right there. But I'm gonna take care of the worlds first. Because, yeah, I think... No, oh, maybe that is a ship. It's not... I doubt it's gonna leave. Hopefully I'm right about that. I mean, if it leaves, I have to know where it goes, so... It's also interesting, just that that Exraki ship I found that had been uh, affected, well, infected, but affected by uh, what the Mukai were doing. I wonder if that will come up. Especially since I didn't destroy it. Let's talk to her. Crap, did she actually leave? Huh. Did not expect that. No, oh, she's right there.
Now I can uh, get into that thing. So that's interesting. The rear guard. Okay, so the rear guard wanted to kill me. The vanguard just wanted to flee, but also wanted to help. It's a little confusing that. Because. I thought it was more that the rear guard were the ones that didn't just want to outright kill us, just wanted to stop us from Thank interfering. You. Welcome back. I don't I don't need to worry about fuel, I'm gonna be right next to it. But what is with this where it's like, oh yeah, they're just systems you can't see on the map. And somehow can't encounter Well? I mean, just, you, you'd think that they wouldn't have such hidden systems, but anyway. It, it's a thing that's necessary for the game. It's a s suspension of disbelief and all that. My hand was shifted over one, one set of keys. All right. And visiting Deep Horizons should also restore my, um, uh, my crew. That's, oh uh, crap, hang on. There. Six you. welcome back. Why is that ship slow? <laughs> Welcome back, Captain. You do? What is it? That's fascinating, Captain. Thank you. On that note, and while it's come a little late to help with that mission, a prototype Terran battle cruiser has just arrived from home. What are you talking about arrived? It's being it built right here. over there. I trust you'll put it to good use. Uh... 26 points. I'm just... doesn't look like I'd be able to buy any. Charge warhead and point defense. Is there anything else, Captain? Good luck, Captain. And also, I just... want to look here... Once they pass the special, 
भूखे is yeah well some let's say motives not all about the lake sites? Our spies learned of some of this. We know that one of your own was assassinated, Commander Magara. And yet you allowed the assassin who did it to go free. Do you hope that she will one day return your generous favor? I suspect you will be disappointed. But this is of little consequence. What did you learn about the lake sites grand plans? Have many. Once advanced worlds gone suddenly dark, caught even entire fleets that never return. The next sites seem to understand that when responding to significant threats, lesser concerns like morality can turn it on beings' actions. Your tasks for us are complete. You resolved each of the issues we had for you with diplomacy, only using violence when there was no other option. This is a good strategy for gaining allies. But be sure that those standing behind you are worth the trust you place in them, or you are only creating future enemies. For now, the spur is quiet and you have proven yourself a capable custodian. We are uploading the hyperspace maps to your ship. Earth will be free to spread into the spur and claim new worlds. I'm not gonna attack him. Hmm. Indeed. Goodbye, human. Okay. I guess it does make sense, the whole... the Empire extends outside of this area since you don't see borders on the top of the screen for them. But this does leave me wondering what is up with the, um, those missions I had done to help out those two scribe because I still get attacked he never mentioned them and this still happens so yeah what the hell Defense seems to be a lesser form of the phaser. I mean, it's neat looking, but. I 
I, I think the Vindicator may still stand as a better ship. And I also can't help but feel like there's... There should be more to come. I mean, for one thing, that wave of evil and destruction is still coming. I haven't addressed that. And also, it would seem like this is a, hey, we need to figure out how to follow the Luxites. Start with this. Oh, great. I didn't know that this was the setup. Wait, I'm confused. Oh, they, that's right. They're attacking it. So I'm, I'm trying to defend. I'm not trying to attack. But I am screwing up by not defending it better. Hang on. Okay, and this is also very annoying. It's like, I... I it, the whole... Yeah, I don't really get to track my own ship that much. Interesting, this has no weapons on it. They're fleeing. Captain! Thanks for your help. I can't believe we got attacked by a splinter group of human isolationists. That sucks. In just a second. Great work! We are transmitting them back to Seoul now. With these hyperspace maps, we'll finally be able to expand beyond just our neighborhood. Not only that, our battlecruiser production is coming along nicely. We'll be able to project real power over the region now. I've heard whispers around here, Captain. Alien whispers, but understandable just the same. We're about to enter the Age of Humanity, whether they're ready for it or not, or happy about it or not. Every alien knows it. And it's all thanks to you, Captain. However the future unfolds, it will be on human terms. Well done.
that's it. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm not overly impressed by it. Because, I mean, it's like, okay, but how much do these hyperspace maps really matter since... Oh, hang on, let me, let me save. Uh, so I have a time. Yeah, that is not the right time. Did I accidentally hit cancel? I might have done that. Uh, 44... Oh, yeah. Need to put it down here. But, yeah, because it's like... The isolationists were a... Oh, yeah, and there's also isolationists. Wait, we've had this discussion before? We never addressed the whole Telexite's trying to... in you know, the trap to try to ha uh, upset our alliances. No resolution with that. I've still got... Uh... This, I don't know. That Well, that I can probably get rid of. No idea about this. I mean, this suggests chasing... I mean, it seems like there's got to be more... Um, also still this. Don't know about that. I mean, I could just look some of this stuff up, though. Um, no idea about the Hydra Spanner either, and the crashed... You know, I'm just gonna look for that right now. Oh, is it just gonna be an Easter egg? That's not all that interesting. I'm just, it would have been nice if they did wrap that into something. Okay, so apparently, when I put in the crashed uh, Tesla thing, I also saw a crashed Radiant ship, which, yeah, I remember running into that. Apparently, there's a way to actually get the language. Hang on. Maybe I can do a little more wrap-up there. But, yeah, it just... I feel like there's plot holes, like, with the isolationists. The alliance, you know, weakening or not. Um, supposedly I'm able to talk to the, this Taiwan to learn the language. Um, we still, it's like, do we go after the Lexites? Do we not? What's up Welcome with this back. incoming threat? Is there anything else you want to know? Radiant Angel? I don't mean to brag, but I've propositions. You need a special Lexite. I'll upload it. Thank you. Now. Is there anything else you want? To really? What was in a black hole? I hope you locked it back up. I'll never understand humans. Is there anything else you want uh, to know? Yeah. Those are rare. But I recall someone saying there used to be some on. Is there anything else you want to know? Goodbye. Because I do worry. Hi. Just 
player is not helping me as far as that goes. Um, although, let, let's see, because this is... Because they didn't destroy all of them. There's one. Okay. They just want to destroy that thing. It's like, here you go. I don't care. Um, but yeah, I just... Maybe there's going to be more DLC to come. I'm, I, I am just unsure. I'm unaware. I've been more focused on this than like going back and reading through the press release. Ah! I, I have it. I, I have it, though. It, it's right here. Why was I not able to just give it to them? Oh. Sure. Hey, they're not attacking me anymore. Um. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me see. I still have the press release up, so... Six you, welcome back. Now I just want to jump back here. That's also weird, something noted here. Humans have finally proven that they may be worthy custodians of the Spur, but they must also prove themselves to allies and enemies alike. Meanwhile, Commander Magera is missing, a faction of humanity is developing a dangerous battle cruiser, and the Mowling's God has reluctantly returned and asked you to help save them from destruction. That's not actually accurate. But it's a faction of humanity is developing a dangerous battle cruiser. What are you talking about faction? It was... It was Star Control. So that, that's odd. Although true, I was, I did fight a battle cruiser, but, oh, there we go. But, you know, I fought it. I never knew it was being made. I, I, it's possible I missed stuff. It, it, it is. I will fully admit that it is possible that I just missed some stuff. Concerning the isolationists, but at the same time, that's a... Okay, this is kind of an important plot point. Why was I not directed there? Because I don't think I missed anything as far as, like, missions that were presented to me that, like, I didn't then do. I did every mission that was presented to me, I believe. So, the fact that I feel like I'm missing something significant here is not, not positive. Yeah, oh boy, um... I'm just thinking, it, it's, it definitely added, it added about 15 hours to the playthrough, so that's a positive. It, it generally, for gameplay, was enjoyable, but, well, although, uh, the Syndicate did get kind of feeling like busy missions. Aftermath was alright, I just felt it was a bit short. Return of the Lexites didn't resolve enough questions for me, I feel. The syndicate I just explained felt busy and left too many things. It, it felt weird. I, I just, it just felt weird. And then this also is just weird, but it's... Maybe there's another expansion coming that will finally wrap some of this stuff up? In a way, it would make some sense, because this was just, you know, us rising, but it still is... We've been built up from the beginning that, oh, there's this great evil coming, and we're not addressing it yet. So, yeah, I've, well, I got enough time tonight. I'm going to start writing, but it, it's, 
Oh boy. Let me let me quickly check something. Uh do 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 do. The Earth Rising expansion is twenty bucks. I just am looking at the Steam page. The base game is thirty dollars, and that yeah, the recommendation still stands for that. The expansion has been nice, but I don't think I could say it's necessary at the moment. I'll grant it could change, though. Like, if there is another expansion... Because if there is, I, I'll kind of expect that it will require some... Well, it would at least have to explain some stuff that's happened here in the Earth Rising expansion. If you could get that expansion without this one. But it, it's... Mm. I don't want to fail to recommend it, but I'm also a little un unsure about recommending it. It's like, it, it's, it adds to the game. It does. But it didn't really impress me. It, it's left too many things just... Oh, actually, hang on. Um, I do need to go back in for something. I want the, the correct name for the Faction of Eight guy. His species. But it's like, you know, I mean, that, that is a problem for me. That it, it, he's introduced and then there's no payoff with him at all. He could come. We don't need him there at all. Maybe it's setting up something in the future, but it's. It annoys me to a degree because why are you setting it up now? Why do you have this set up now when I'm not aware of another expansion coming? And he contributes nothing right now. You could have just decided to be like, hey, the librarian has contacted you because he's found something you may find interesting. You could just do that later and not have this guy in the game yet. Instead, you have him in the game, not really contributing anything all that interesting. The librarian, though, I will grant, he was cool. I kind of like that. I also kind of wish he were introduced earlier. Um, like this idea that there are more autonomous measured out there, and the fact that he says, hey, here are the caches, that's helpful too. Um, but yeah, it, it's... I don't know, I, I don't think I would say 20 bucks. 16. Welcome back. I think that that is one thing that is, that is true. Right here. Uh, you know, I'm gonna buy fuel here. It's more, it, it's more convenient to buy it uh, from a star base. Oh, why did I do that? Then um. Exception. Then trying to go into a trader to get it. Yeah, I don't know about the full 20. It, there's just too many loose threads, some of which are just, I might not be knowing where to pull them. You know, like, I'd have to search the things in the, in the list there. I should all, you know, I'll, I can do that. I will do that when I'm in the system here. I'm not changing the playtime. Um, but I'll play through the, the different tapes. I just, let me find his name. Which I actually might be able to do without even landing. It might show up. When I'm scanning the planet. Urpox, okay. I do have a different name written in here. Um. Oh, hang on. First... I'll fix this. There. Um, that'll work. This is just part 18. Okay. Nope. This one. 
for immediate distribution to science councils of the eight, a recent Urpax analysis of systems that host rainbow worlds. Gravitational analysis of other planets in the systems where rainbow worlds are present suggests that rainbow worlds only came into existence within the past one to two hundred thousand years and did not replace or result in the destruction of any existing worlds when they did so. This timeline provides the only hint to the likely formation of the rainbow worlds, given the overlap with the known timeline of precursors and in particular the eternal wars. Along with some of the observed effects of chroma when subjected to high energies, this has led Urpark's researchers to suggest that the rainbow worlds could be used as a lens to view into, or even physically access purple space. At the moment, this theory is considered unnecessarily speculative and dangerous, and will not be pursued. So say the eight. Prior to the... I don't remember... It was... Uh, something when I was looking up the, the Starbase locations, I saw some mention about the Rainbow World locations as well, and somebody's mentioning, and it, there is something said outside of this that the Rainbow Worlds may have a tie to another dimension, and that that's where, that's how the, uh, Forerunners, the Xraki Forerunners came in, was actually with or near the Rainbow World. So that basically confirms that that theory. But I find it interesting that that's from Faction of Eight Days. Our greatest feat, the most incredible accomplishment the Thrive have ever achieved, will also one day be our doom. This amuses me. I find it fitting that we, masters of everything else under a million suns, have mastered irony as well. The Scribe are immortal. This is not a clever euphemism or poetic license. A Scribe, barring accident or malice, cannot die. Having reached what is self-evidently the pinnacle of evolutionary development, my people used the knowledge we had to put an end to it. No more mutation, no more cosmic wolves of the dice. What more could the dice do? How can you improve upon perfection? This was a wise decision, and even now, knowing what I know, I agree with it. But it is a decision which sealed our inevitable downfall. This isn't a surprise, nor even really a secret. The math was straightforward, even at the time, for anyone who cared to look at it. A scribe could only die by malice and accident, but malice and accident were not stopped. We would slowly die off, and not be replaced. But these concerns were dismissed, or brushed aside by the irrefutable observation that the scribe were perfect. When a problem arose, a scribe found a solution. We trusted in the ability of future Scribe to thread the needle through any possible population crunch. And now it is clear that will not happen. Okay. But that is something... I don't remember where it was. Oh yeah, the Pinthy mentioned about how they don't die and therefore they also are not adapting to anything. It is beyond your station to even speculate about such matters that it is, and you are a fool for putting it to paper. A more sensible stance is the observation that given these parallel timelines, the scribe may not be around to effectively counteract the outsider phenomena. It will be my recommendation to scribe your seat that more resources be devoted to the preparation of the ward species to confront the outsiders themselves. A millennia, the outsider threat appears unstoppable. Since the disruption first appeared in the W-51 star-forming region, no scribe naval assets have returned from its perimeter. And, as it expands at a significant fraction of the speed of light, conventional EM-based observation is of little use as well. If the phenomena's expansion rate remains unchanged, it will reach the edge of Scribe space within 200 years and completely envelop the Empire within a thousand. 
Second-hand knowledge from beings fleeing the phenomena is limited by the above factors, as well as such beings' general lack of technological advancement and intelligence. Amongst pair-level civilizations, there has been no direct information sharing, but a few conclusions can be reached from their observed behavior. Notably, the Arinu have begun to depart from this area of space, and statistical analysis of the movement patterns of self-replicating Jeff, Jeff, FA class probes suggest their activities, while still erratic, are also trending away from the phenomenon. It is beyond the scope of this scouting report to speculate about such matters, but this author has noted that the 1000 year time frame places the destruction of the Scribe Empire by the phenomena on or about our predicted internal extinction date due to self-replication problems. I am not entirely convinced this is a coincidence. Okay. A little annoying that I, this one actually comes before this one. This is a response to that. Um, the Arilu, that's the name of the observers. I had to stop and think for a little bit. Which also, we haven't seen them for a while. <laughs> They haven't added anything to, to this. They were in Aftermath, but that was it. Uh... This is gonna take a while. It is beyond your station to even speculate about such matters that it is, and you are a fool for putting it to paper. A more sensible stance is the observation that given these parallel timelines, the scribe may not be around to effectively counteract the outsider phenomena. It will be my recommendation to scribe your seat that more resources be devoted to the preparation of the ward species to confront the outsiders themselves. A millennia is a short time frame, but still perhaps enough time to allow for the effective breeding of favorable species in the region, as well as the necessary elimination of inferior ones. More extreme measures may also need to be considered, including reopening the origin. The potency of the Exeraki and the corrupting being which controlled their actions may be enough to offset the strength of the outsider threat. I sincerely hope that we also do not discover that they are one and the same. Okay, so I am left wondering about the timing of this. Because, um, I mean, obviously, the 4,000 years isn't up yet because the scribe haven't died off. But is this maybe setting up. Does this maybe explain that, no, 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 this stuff will be in a sequel because this will have to be so far into the future when the wave actually gets here? Th that's possible. I don't necessarily like that that's gonna be the answer. Because I. I know, I just feel like too much time has been spent looking at that. And it's also, if it's still going to be hundreds of years from now, why are so many spe species running now? I mean, it, it just... It just seems weird. Plus, it's said is a fraction of the speed of light, so then why did the Lexites... Why are the Lexites so like, oh, we can't can't be slowed down in our hyperdrives that allow us to go faster faster than speed light? It is... And it shouldn't be in one of these. This, this kind of explanation should be... You encounter it normally. You don't have to buy it and then remember to listen to it. Continuing my earlier thoughts, it is my belief that we, the scribe in the future, cannot prevent ourselves from dying off. We are now too static. Young beings have ideas that the old do not. I have observed our world species, and, on occasion, for my amusement, even those not fit to become wards. The process a being goes through while becoming mature requires an intentional rejection of the old way of doing things. The young mind hungers to learn, to do things its own way. The scribe do not have young minds anymore. We do not see new ways of doing things. As an illustration, the device I entered this report into is little changed from the one used 500 years ago. Unchanged because it is perfect? For reader, I assure you, it is not. 
My peers, the ones that understand the issue, are sanguine. They are content knowing we will one day be gone. And the more I think on it, the more I realize I am as well. A perfect end for a perfect race. We had seen the effects of evolution, the effects of exploration. It led to instability and suffering. Few know the truth of the Exraki War. I am not permitted to write of it here, but if we found one door that should not have been opened, why risk opening another? So, we stopped opening doors, and thus, we are doomed. Our greatest concern now should be that of the fate of our world species. They are young, full of life, and pathetic. For all their vigor, they will be doomed without us. How many trillions of deaths will occur without a scribe to mind the tiller? This is what keeps me awake now. As requested, I have gathered all records pertaining to the Faction of Eight and sequestered them in the prescribed archives of Scribnosite. All other known copies have been destroyed so as to not pollute the brains of any chronicler whose duties require them to maintain these records. I have attached the following synopsis to them to serve as an approved and sanitary summary of their contents. The faction of eight arose approximately minus 7,000 in E, evidently as a response to an aggressive civilization that originated in an unremarkable region in what is now Sector 03. Close to Alpha Satori. The faction themselves seem to understand little of the nature of the threat, with most of the first hand knowledge of it held by one member race, the Kolat, who would be annihilated in the conflict. These two factors, their victory working as a cohesive alliance, and their despair over the loss of their allies, the Kolat, led the surviving members of the alliance to ascribe an almost mystical value to the number of civilizations present in the Alliance at the time of their victory. In this case, eight. Following their victory, they would search for a replacement member, convinced that their success was due to the number of member races in the Alliance alone, rather than the individual qualities of those races. I know I'd already listened to that one, but that before the revised and then the revised revised. Um, I already listened to this one as well, so I won't bother with it. I suppose I listened to that one. I know I listened to that one. I'm not going to bother with it again. Following the polite suggestion of my superiors, I will soon delete the summary of the Faction of Eight, focusing on their formation, and concentrate my summary on their interactions with the Scribe, which is deemed to be a more palatable topic for future Scribe chroniclers. By the time the Faction of Eight encountered the Scribe, the faction's fascination with the number eight had led to them outright eliminating space-faring races who were not among their number, convinced that the light of their civilization must never touch more than eight races at a time. Our ancestors wisely sidestepped this threat during their first contact with the faction, a member species called the Pythus, by posing not as peers, but as beasts of burden. These early scribes learned much from this early contact, and acquired much faction technology in secret. When the faction did first learn of our potency and light, and moved to destroy it, our ancestors were easily able to annihilate the Bythus, and secure our own place within the faction. Following the direct order of my superiors, I will soon delete the summary of the faction of it, focusing on their early interactions with the weak, unformed scribe people, and instead, focus on the eight's complete annihilation by the scribe people, which is deemed to be a more palatable topic for future scribe chroniclers. Once a member of the faction of eight, the scribe strained against the constraints membership placed upon them. The faction maintained a balance between the eight members by restricting individual technological development, stunting the progression of the entire region. Such feeble restraints could not match scribe curiosity, however, 
and we soon found ways to move past them. Other members of the faction would learn of this, but the internal mystical devotion to the number eight and our place among those eight prevented them from doing little more than complain about it. When the time came to throw off even the pretense of restraint, the scribe did so forcefully. Carefully orchestrated internal coups were initiated on the whole worlds of the other faction members with the help of local sympathizers. We were not the only ones who despised the constraints. We were the only ones fit to rule, however. And when faction military power had been shattered and Sky control of the region made complete, there was little to be done but to eliminate the traitors who had turned against their own kind. And so the founding principle of the Empire was laid. Only the scribe could decide who sees the light. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure I played this, but I don't remember so The playing. Eternal Wars are a poetic misnomer first applied by the manner of their discovery. Erpark's researchers leading a Pan-8 group from the Science Council were studying the quasi-degenerate worlds which litter this region, operating under a hypothesis that their formation was the result of millions of years of an unknown geonuclear process. I do remember this, yeah. This eternity of action was eventually revealed to have instead been the result of a single immensely violent action. Historical records, always hard to come by when considering the precursors, revealed hints pointing in the same direction. A war of immense destructive energy was once waged in this region. Who the precursors were fighting is completely unknown. There have never been any traces of a civilization which could rival them. Precursor technology or artifacts also have never made mention of a war, or even any interactions with another culture which they would consider a peer. It is possible all such records were wiped out, making this a war of complete destruction. But this runs contrary to the perceived good humor of the precursors readily present in their artifacts and technology. Theories quickly become speculative from this point on. The lack of even the slightest mention of who the opponent was suggests that the precursors were possibly fighting amongst themselves. Another possibility is that they were fighting an enemy who was not from this space at all. This theory is not endorsed by all members of the Eight, but it is worth noting here that we have heard rumors the Urpox have dedicated considerable energies to the study of it. Profits increased 3.5% on the year on a 10% increase in revenue, largely driven by improved traffic at Molnir service ships from minor spacefaring entities following the expected departure of effective scribe rule from the region. As expected, Sectors 01 and 03 of the Scribe Empire show the greatest improvement in such business due to their proximity to, respectively, the outsider phenomena and the wave of minor spacefaring entities fleeing the outsider phenomena. Write-downs are accelerating in regions affected by the Covenant, who continue to demand total conversion of annihilation. These write-downs are predicted to continue in regions where the Covenant are relocating as a result of outsider expansion. Internal analysis expects the Inquisition will target Scribe Sector 03 within the next century. Our planned partnership with the Crimson Corporation continues to remain on hold due to an officially there, unofficially mutual unwillingness to solve licensing issues that have been discussed at length elsewhere. It is still hoped that this can be concluded within the next year, and in particular before the hegemony make deeper advances into Scribe Sector 02. A failure of such talks would lead to profit warnings in future reports. The thing is, some of that information actually seemed, it seemed interesting and useful but I have no idea what about a lot of it. It's like you're referencing things that I don't really care about, but there was like mention of the, the outside of phenomena. It's like more information on that, please? Uh, no, apparently not. For internal distribution only among members of the eight science councils. What follows is a brief summary of research activity on known rainbow worlds. Geophysical research. Inconclusive. Rainbow worlds do not exhibit any known geological behavior, including plate tectonic, volcanic, or cryovolcanic activity. 
Although there is enough surface gravity to attract atmospheres and liquid water, there are also no observed erosion-like features. This is likely a result of the material characteristics of rainbow worlds, discussed below. Materials Analysis – Inconclusive The base material of rainbow worlds is an unknown substance, uniformly covering at least the surface of these worlds. Dubbed chroma, it has resisted all attempts at destructive analysis, typically by destroying our testing equipment. Non-destructive analysis has been similarly inconclusive. There have been observed echoes in hyperspace when chroma is subjected to extremely high energies. See, failed destructive testing. But research in this avenue is limited by our ability to apply such ferocious energy in one place. Biological research. There is no biological activity observed on rainbow worlds, nor none of the necessary precursors for doing so. E.g. carbon-based compounds, silicon-based compounds, swarms of clever robots, etc. In sum, we know that they're pretty and that's about it. So say the eight. But we have found life forms on them. Alright. Well, that that should actually wrap this up. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll, I'll stop the recording and get to, get to writing. Alright, see you next time.